definitely hope for a positive outcome, but there, you know, it's also possible that there isn't one. So we just have to wait and see. I, clearly, if you could wave a magic wand and and do it right and and not have the suspension the suspense play out, uh, I'd rather fast forward to the end so we know what the result is. But but that's just not how this uh, system works. What is the contingency plan if you can't land LeMayhew? You know, like always, we're, you know, ultimately come up with what's the best options, you know, but we're going to exhaust his option first. I mean, which is to try to, to keep him here. And he loves playing in uh, in New York. He loves playing for the New York Yankees and, and our fan base. And he likes, you know, clearly loves his teammates. And so there's a lot of things in our favor, but ultimately it comes down to the, the financial uh opportunity that we provide as it's measured to the financial opportunities that others are providing and and that's the big unknown and only him and his family and his uh, representation can navigate that how handcuffed are you this offseason financially considering everything that happened last season with no fans in the stands i mean certainly uh it, there's a lot of uh more a lot more discussions and and things to navigate that we've had to deal with uh and so it's a hard question to answer. Um, there's no one that provides more. We, we will be the number one payroll regardless of anything that happens, which is a huge statement in its own right. Uh, but obviously, since we've made a huge commitment to others already, um, you know, it affects your you know, flexibility and viability you know, as you move forward. Uh, so every step that gets taken needs to be carefully worked through and measured with all your needs as a organization in the present, because ultimately we have a team we feel that can compete for a world championship and it does need some additional help with that. That would include, uh, you know, DJ LeMay use return, we hope, and along with maybe some other opportunities. Uh, but time will tell, um, you know, Hal Steinbrenner and his family have provided, you know, so much for so long and, uh, and that commitment's still there right now. So, uh, and it always will be. Does Masahiro Tanaka fit into the picture if you sign LeMahieu? You know, I I don't think by rules of Major League Baseball in the union, I'm allowed to answer who does or who doesn't or what does or what doesn't. I think we're supposed to be projecting complete uh, secrecy on what we can and can't do, what's, what is workable, what isn't workable. I think that's not supposed to be a transparent transaction. Uh, you know, I think... Uh, it, the game is supposed to be set up in a way that the players benefit from full, uh, you know, you know, protection so they can, you know, extract as much perceived competition as there is in their contract negotiations with other clubs and have everybody, you know, unknown about who's capable of doing more or less. And so I got to I got to stay silent on that question. I'm sorry. We saw Glaber Torres full-time at short last season. He had some struggles defensively. Do you feel as though he can be a successful major league shortstop, or do you consider moving him to second base? I think he can do both. I think he's a better second baseman than shortstop. I think that uh, uh, he can play shortstop. Uh, I think that ultimately uh, he struggled in the beginning of the, the pandemic 60-game season because – he, you know, after the spring training one shutdown into spring training two, uh, he did not, uh, you know, and it's, I'm not playing a blame game, but he, he wasn't in the best shape to start uh, the second spring training. So upon his return from the shutdown, um, we spent a little bit of a first half of the season playing catch up. Maybe it was the first 40 or 45 games of the season playing catch up. And, and uh, once we got him back online and in shape, you saw, uh, towards the last, you know, 20 games, including the playoffs, the Glaber Torres are used to seeing. So I think, I think the season that overall he had isn't representing representing what he really is. Uh, it's more along the lines of what you saw in the postseason and what you saw the previous year, uh, which anybody would want. So he's more than capable of playing short, but I acknowledge he's a better second baseman than a shortstop. Do you enter spring training whenever that may be, thinking Gary Sanchez is your number one catcher? I mean, yeah, I ultimately, I, I think going into uh, the season next year, we uh, will let it, we'll let it play out regardless. But there's certainly an anticipation and an expectation of a bounce back for Gary Sanchez. You know, the talent level is there. Um, you know, we're only a year removed from what an all star American League all star catcher, a perennial 30 plus home run hitter. Uh, 